Stellar Blade is an action adventure game made by a Korean developer. Shift up. You know, I never actually say it. Korean game developer. That's why it feels so weird that I actually said it wrong. Korean developer. Developer of what? Game developer. Okay. <laughs> that that is reveal itself during 2021 in the state of play. During that, people were like, oh, okay, that game. But then, um, anyway, we're gonna go and play around with God of War and um, probably Yuffie DLCs and uh, maybe Kenna. You know, the Breach of Spirits or something like that. And that is when it just gone. There is no rumors about Project Eve. There's nobody talking about it. And it's just gone. But for me, it's more about Final Fantasy VII Yuffie though. But it, since it was gone until 2024 January, it has appeared. The state of play. From Project Eve to Stella Blade. And the game was reviewed and a lot of people were making a lot of controversial statement like, Oh, the guy is just way too beautiful, way too perfect. Oh, isn't that just Korean plastic love? Da, 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 da. But it's not really so though. It's it's it does she does really look like she got plastic surgery, but she doesn't really actually have plastic surgery. And even though she have, what is wrong with it? It's nothing wrong. She looks very uh -huh, and she looks very nice. Look at this, look at this, yes, this ass. This is what we are here about. Look at this, look at this, yes, this jingle jingle. This is why I play Stella Blade. And to that I say let's freaking go, yes! I think game developer really knows what they are doing this day. They really knows that, or oh, they just tired. They just tired of wokeness shit. They know wokeness does not make money. Look what happened to Forspoken. Checkmate. It's a Japanese company who tried to place Western wokeness too much, and it got way miserable in a very gone in a very bad way. So uh, that is that so i think square enix first thing first they're starting from if you play remakes it doesn't jiggle to rebirth it jiggles and then now with with this very cool nice korean game and then later on we will have chainsaw lollipop in this year as well which there's a lot of bunch of games that i'm really looking forward in this year itself but this is not really about that this video is about me reviewing stella blade so let's get into it so you start the game with these weird flying things, it's just flying over and then the next thing you know, we are under attack and then we were like, oh no, what's gonna happen next? Are we gonna go and put some shield up? Yes, they're gonna go and put some shield up, but this shield is so useless. The protection is so useless, like you're using the worst kind of protection. I'm not pretty sure where, I, where I'm trying to get into this, but that is just what happened. So it breaks into two. So that we can get in between because it's the most important thing. You have to get in between in order to shoot up a lot of small little stuff into the sphere shape stuff in the most important stuff, okay? Only one will survive to the journey into the sphere shape of the very important thing. As you went deeper, you will witness your brothers and sister getting shot down just like nothing. It means nothing. Only one can get into the sphere shape. And now I think I need to stop with the ovary joke and weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as you were falling, you think this is you that is falling, but it's actually not. Because the next thing you know, it explodes and review. Ta-da! You! So anyway, next thing we know that we crash and then we just get into this unopener door. And after that, Taki, the most perfect. She is the best, the best of the best, the best girl. Taki, my love, my darling. I don't remember the lyrics my love my darling and i still don't remember the lyrics anyway taki came to the rescue and she showed us the most beautiful thing in the world i thought i was struck by an angel Isn't that the most beautiful thing you ever seen? 
So this is where you start your game and you fight a few monsters. Go through some tutorials like guarding, jumping, or even parry. Which I fail miserably. I, I know, I know. Just let me try a little bit more, okay? And let me go again. Let's see. Look at that. Yes, yes. I am so good in video games. So after we kill these guys, we just keep proceeding, just keep running until we found the rendezvous point where the whole earth is now trying to kill us. Even though the whole earth is trying to kill us, I just realized one thing. We are running at the back. This means that we can see or chase Taki's ass. And now would be the good time to slap the like to the video. Anyway, we reached the rendezvous point just to find our teammates getting killed by some fat ass monster. So we try to help them. Just when we try to help them, something weird happened. Oh shit, what is that? What is that? Oh, a giant ass sheep just fall. And kill everybody. Everybody died. Everybody died. I think everybody died. Did everybody die? I think everybody died, right? So everybody died. Everybody died and we fall into despair. And this is where Taki is here. Don't worry. With Taki around, we will always feel better. She will comfort us. Pull us up. Pull us back to the living. And this is why I love Taki. So after we get our shit together and now we have to fight. Yeah, the fat ass boss. So this will be the first time that you will experience a boss fight. And after an intense match with a boss. A very cool cinematic will trigger. Just when you thought everything's gonna be okay, this happened. Some really strong looking lady just appeared. And I don't think she comes in peace. And this is the moment that I know we fucked up. So Taki is being Taki, being the good girl and preparing to fight these scary looking things which is obviously stronger than any of us. And then this black color wing thing is just say no, I'm just gonna fight the other guy and just kill the weaker one. And then as coward as she is, she just cut off Taki's hand and I was like no <laughs> Taki Which means waterfall in Japanese. I don't know why I say that but yeah. So that's what happened. So if you guys want to know what actually happened to Taki, I this is just a speculation from what I know. I think Taki actually turned into some enemy in the future that you have to fight with. And at first I just got this as theory and then I can confirm it with the trailer that I just saw just now. So there you go, I mean that is literally Taki turning into some enemy and stuff like that. Oh boy. Anyway, the story continues with Adam dropping you off into this apocalyptic city where you can start to roam and explore the city as you like. Where after the game finished introducing you to the city of Eido 7, you can now take control of Eve and move around the city. And as me being me and as a cultured player, you know what I have to do. Yes, I gotta check her out. That's what I gotta do. Look at that hair. Man. She looks amazing. Look at this. This is the best thing ever. And after we enjoy some nice view, we will proceed to kill some monsters. And around here is where we will get our first puzzle-like thingy that we need to solve. So we're gonna go and loot some dead dude and then get some code from this dead dude. Which then we need to key in the weird code from the dead dude and then after that we need to open the door and we got to thanks to that dude thank you that dude as you walk in you will notice the building collapsing you see Eve is so beautiful that even the buildings falls for Eve Anna, Anna. even though I should have gone straight but my gamer instinct tells me to go right so I climbed this cliff and I went deeper and I found a chair I mean is this like a Easter egg for Final Fantasy 7 remake or rebirth or it's just a chair but because the chair that she been using is not something like this, you know. 
This is really, really, really suspicious. I think this is an easter egg for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So after having some fun with the chair, I proceed the game and found a campsite, which is a place where we can finally really enjoy and experience Stella Blade itself. With camps, now you can rest, buy item, and most importantly, upgrade skills. With skills upgrade, you can unlock skills and survivability, where you can perfect dodge, perfect parry, and even blink. Of course, there are more skills for you to explore, so that you can build your perfect waifu. I only wish if they can upgrade the size of the pubes. That would be my perfect waifu. Anyway, as I proceed the game, I found a bridge where I need to jump and do some nice gymnastic move. And once we cross the bridge, I found a point where we can do some air strike. So we continue to fight some monster until I come across the worst element in the game. Stupid ass ambush. Holy crap! And look at this, I just died here for the very first time. This is stupid. Which I hate that stupid thingy, which I don't even know what the hell it is, but I hate it so much. Urgh. Anyway, as I continue with the story, there's a bunch of monsters trying to kill me. But we survive the attack and proceed to this nice platforming session where I have to play around with poles and climb walls. And this is where I come across this water session. Which is where I did an oopsie. Oopsie! Jeff did an oopsie! Ooh, it's so painful to watch! He should just swim down below here in order to get into this weird item, but he was trying to be way too smart. He tried to do all this weird gimmick thing by pushing this weird stuff, climb up to the ladder, and then jump off the building to get this weird water thing, chassis thingy. But then he should just actually swim out but he did not he's trying to be smart again and we're trying to go up into this weird plank thingy and then just jump out and he's like man look at me i am so good in video game it's so painful to watch oopsie jeff did an oopsie as i proceed with the journey i found a camp and so i took some rest after the rest i proceed on by climbing down this ladder and whoa whoa look at that look at how she slide down that is just way too hard that is hard. And now this will be the best time to remind you to slap like to the video if you haven't so though, but um, yeah. Once I went down, I used a high energy compression battery that I got from this car to open this gate where it has booby written on top of it. You can't tell me that the developer don't know what they're doing when they do this. They know, they know booby is going to be the best thing in the game. Anyway, I went inside and it's a library where I found a map books and a piano oh. so I went and play with it After a nice applause, some tentacle monster barge in, so I kill the monster. This is not that kind of game. If you're expecting something different, it, it, I'm sorry, it's just not in here. And so I went out and some cinematic trigger, and then I walked into the parking lot where I found a supply cam. Supply cam is a bigger cam with more features like you can upgrade your weapons and armor here, and you can also make costume as well. And this is what really matters. Fighting, upgrades, all of that, get out of here. They don't really matter. Do not get into what really matter here. Costumes, we have red one, green one, black one, or the orange one. Which one do you want? Only $200 per night. I mean, only available at the full game or the boss challenge. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this will be the last camp that you can stop by, at least for the demo. After I took some rest, I went up to the roof. Where I have to fight my first boss fight. It's not like the teaser one that we had from the beginning of the game, but this one, you really need to defeat it. So I defeat the boss, 
and the game ends. You're not supposed to see that. But I'm just kidding. The game really ends once when you beat the boss. Once when you beat the boss, the last health that you just like, bam, cut off. And there will be have this very nice trailer that it will show it to you. And in this trailer itself, it will end with a nice, whether you want to buy the standard edition or the deluxe edition pack kind of stuff coming out. And this is pretty cool. It's pretty cool what I'm trying to say is, but I'm kind of concerned. I did pre-order the game, but I like to do video games with like, you know, like a physical edition so that I can make videos, unboxing and stuff like that. What I'm concerned about this is that the Deluxe Edition. I pretty, pretty want the Deluxe Edition. You know, what is really matter in this game, you have to get into what really matter in the game, costume. And the extra Deluxe Edition really have like extra costume for you. And I really want that, but I'm really just like, I can't buy a physical version of Deluxe because I don't think it exists. I'm not pretty sure though, but Yes, that's one of the reasons, but I already pre-ordered the game, so um, I'm really hoping they will have like a like a downloadable pack for like the Deluxe Edition stuff, you know. So let's talk a little bit about the game. So first of all, we have the battle system, which gives you a very nice feel. The first thing is, you know, the game is a PlayStation 5 game, which will have like a nice adaptive trigger haptic feedback which makes you feel very good each time when you parry you really feel it you feel the parry and then you know it just it's just that they're not really using the trigger so you don't really actually feel like if they make it like ping and then you like you know adapt a little bit that would be crazy but the the button is kind kind of like very basic so it's like square triangle and then you will have like a nice combo with square square triangle triangle square triangle and then it is very simple very very nice and casual it's not as as hardcore as like Sekiro or whatever that people like to compare it and it have a very nice ambience nice feel to it the whole thing is just perfect I, I mean I really like the battle system I really like the whole moment of the battle itself the music is going on with you and then like you know the battle is just going around it makes you feel like you're just having a good time and what what else you need you you know the game is just that good and next is the music. The music is crazy. This is where when people collect to compare with Neo Automata and stuff, because the music is just way too good. Let's just, you know, listen to this again. Oh. Man, I didn't even really want to finish up the thing. It's just like, it's just way too good. The music itself is really, really that good. I, I just like, I just want to get to keep going if it can, but we have to end the video somewhere, right? <laughs> so it's like, damn, the music, oh man, why is this so good? I guess this is really one of the things that really gets me into the game as well. It makes you feel a little bit of like, like cool, you know, like, like, you're like you can fight with like monsters and that there is this nice oh bro orchestra thingy going on behind you. It's just super nice, super great. I really, really, really like it. I uh, they just really they got the music ten out of ten. Let me tell you, let me just say out there. I'm I'm just gonna say that. I'm just ten out of ten music. That's it. And lastly, we have the graphics, and of course this include with the character design as well. Do I need to say more? The graphic is really good. Okay. I mean, you guys agree. I mean, of course, it is the best out of the best. Nothing more to say. Boo, B. I will rate it as booby. That's it. That's it, guys. And that will conclude the whole thing. So, if you guys want to play the game, I will definitely 10 out of 10 recommend you guys to play the game. But will you guys play the game? Okay, if you guys enjoyed this video, give a like and of course subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you guys again on the next video. I'll be seeing you.